Hi guys, it's Tony from GME. Today, we're gonna to be talking about cellular antennas. Now, cellular antennas are something that we get asked a lot of questions about, and there seems to be a lot of confusion in the market about what they do and whether or not you need one. Now, one of the questions I get asked all the time is why I have two antennas on the front of my vehicle, and if they're both for UHF. The answer is, no, they are not. This antenna here, 477 megahertz, connected to my XRS inside the cabin. This antenna here is a multi-band cellular antenna, and it's connected to a Cellfigo portable mobile repeater inside the cab. So a cellular antenna, such as the AT4705B, is designed to work in conjunction with a cellular booster. Now, in years gone by, some of you may have had a mobile phone cradle in your vehicle. These are great for keeping your phone charged, but don't necessarily add any performance advantages in regards to boosting your cellular signal. And it's really important to remember that these systems will not create reception where there is no reception to begin with. If you've got one bar of signal, the antenna and the booster can increase the quality of that signal and enable you to get a text message or a call out. This isn't designed to enable you to watch high definition YouTube videos in the middle of the bush. The intention of a booster is to boost your signal up to a sufficient level where you can get a text message or a phone call out. These antennas are optimised to work on the 3G and 4G bands, and this particular antenna is optimised from 750 all the way up to 2100 megahertz. Now, while a cellular antenna and a UHF antenna do run on very different bands, it's still important to remember to maintain adequate separation between your two antennas. All too often, we'll see a cellular and a UHF antenna maybe 100 mil or 200 mil apart, and they're too close, which could introduce interference. We recommend a minimum of 300 millimetre separation between the antennas. And as you can see on my car here, we've got the antennas about 600 mil apart, which means there's gonna be no interference created by either the radio or the mobile phone antenna. Now, speaking of antenna separation, there's actually two antennas involved with a cellular booster setup. We've obviously got the external antenna on the exterior of the vehicle, which runs into the booster and there's another antenna mounted inside the vehicle which rebroadcasts the signal. It's important to maintain adequate separation between the internal and external antennas. In the case of the Cellfi Go, the app will actually show you the separation of your antennas as a percentage. So it's really easy to set up the antenna when you're installing it to make sure that it's going to give you the optimal performance at all times. So aside from the antenna separation, the only other thing you need to consider when installing a mobile phone booster system is whether you want to have the booster permanently powered or switched on ignition. Now in this vehicle, I have the booster switched on ignition because it does draw a little bit of power and I don't want to run it all the time. The other thing to remember is you need to have the app open and paired to the booster in order for the system to work. So hopefully this video has helped you understand a little bit more about cellular antenna systems. As always, if you've got any questions, drop a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with everything from GME.